Compared to the average human lifespan, a million years is an almost unimaginable amount of time. But from the point of view of the time of existence of our planet, it is not something tangible. If we imagine that our planet lived only a day and not 4.5 billion years, then a million years would be less than 20 seconds in this day. Therefore, our planet a million years ago practically did not differ from modern Earth in terms of global changes. But small differences were still present, and most important of them, the lack of modern people. Today, we'll tell you who our ancestors were and how they lived around that time. By subscribing to the Age of Dinosaurs channel, you will be the first to know about the releases of new videos dedicated to the history and the development of life on our planet. Also, our viewers can express their opinion about the watch video in the comments and rate them with likes. A million years ago, during the Pleistocene epoch, our planet was experiencing another global cooling, and the main difference of that time from ours are connected precisely with this. It would be impossible to estimate how much the continents were shifted relative to their current position without special calculations and instruments. To the naked eye from space, they would have been located in the same places as now. But the climate was much colder. Changes in geology as well as flora and fauna would have been noticeable. Since the ice caps at the poles were noticeably larger and the glaciation extended a considerable distance from the poles, the absence of some reservoirs and islands as well as the presence of land bridges between some territories would be striking. The most notable and important land bridge was, without a doubt, the route connecting Asia and North America. On the site of the modern Bering Strait, there was an isthmus, the presence of which, according to scientists, allowed people and some animal species to populate first North, then South America. The British and Japanese islands were also connected to the mainland. Then, what we now know as Japan was not a chain of separate pieces of land in the ocean, but represented a single whole with the Korean Peninsula. Britain, on the other hand, was united with Europe, not in a political, but in a geographical sense. The appearance of land bridges was due to the fact that large amounts of water in the form of ice accumulated at the poles. According to scientists, the average climate of the planet was 5 to 10 degrees colder, and the level of the world's oceans was lower by more than 100 meters. At the same time, due to the ice cover, there were no objects such as the Baltic Sea and the Great Lakes on the world map. Moreover, in the United States, there was just another array of large freshwater lakes. It was located in the western part of the continent. The retreat of the glacier has led to the disappearance of the reservoirs and the appearance of the five connected lakes on the U.S.-Canada border. The Baltic Sea is the youngest sea on the planet. It is estimated at 10 to 15,000 years old. Due to the low level of the world's oceans, dust storms often passed over the surface of the planet. Coniferous trees predominated in the plant world of the Earth. Of modern hardwoods, oaks, and beaches already existed. But basically the land, especially at the distance from the equator, was covered not with forests, but with tundra and steeps. Representatives of the so-called mammoth fauna dominated the animal kingdom. In addition to the mammoths themselves, these were the most diverse ungulates. Among the predators are the famous saber-toothed tigers, cave lions, and bears. The modern man, or Cro-Magnon, did not exist yet, but the ancestors of people who originated in Africa have already begun their journey to populate the entire planet. True, they still didn't stand out much from other animals and most often were less weak creatures, but thanks to the ability to adapt to rapidly changing conditions of life, some of them were able to achieve some success. In particular, some of them were able to move to Asia and Europe with the help of a land bridge. Among the early hominids known to science, there are several species that could be our ancestors or developed in parallel in conditions of serious competition for the title of dominant creature. One of them was a skilled man or Homo habilis. 
This species is considered the first representative of the genus Homo. He appeared on the territory of the African continent about two million years ago and by the period described has mastered many skills that speak of his serious mental abilities. The habilis made their living by both gathering and hunting. They also knew how to make primitive tools from stone and wood. The growth of these hominids was about 160 centimeters. They walked on two legs. Moreover, the thumb on them was no longer set aside. The teeth of the habilis were smaller than those of the great apes and were comparable in size to the teeth of modern humans. An important feature of these primitive people was the change in the structure of the larynx. They found formations responsible for the creation of speech centers. That is, the habilis could well communicate with each other with the help of voice. Unlike the habilis, who only lived in Africa, the remains of Homo erectus have already been found outside this continent. It appears the living period was from 1.85 million years ago to 400,000 years ago. The ancestors of modern people gave rise to the settlement of mankind in Asia and Europe. Erectus had a fairly large brain, which was not much inferior to the size of the brain of a modern human. They also have a very similar skeleton structure to us. In the development of their skills, this species was far ahead of many of its contemporaries. Homo erectus knew how to use fire and build primitive dwellings. Also, his devices for hunting and fishing were more advanced than those of the Homo habilis. Erectus lived in small groups. It is believed that they began to master the manufacturing of clothing and the preparation of products for the future. In the future, scientists distinguished several subspecies of Homo erectus which lived in different parts of the planet. The so-called Heidelberg man lived in Europe. Pithecanthropus or Javanthropus lived on the Pacific Islands in modern Southeast Asia. And Synanthropus lived in China. It is believed that the Pithecanthropus, as a result, turned out to be a dead-end branch of the development and did not have any influence on the development of the genus Homo sapiens. Their descendants were isolated on the islands and gradually degraded. Perhaps the last of them became victims of the future Australian Aborigines, who about a hundred thousand years ago moved from island to island on their way to the Green Continent. The main interest for science among all kinds of people who lived a million years ago is the Heidelberg Man. In terms of growth and brain size, he was practically in no way inferior to modern people. It is believed that this particular species is the common ancestor of Neanderthals and Cro-Magnons. But externally, Heidelberg man was closer to Neanderthals than to us, although the structure of the dental arc of the Heidelberg man is almost identical to ours. Like other types of ancient people, they appeared in Africa, but then some of them moved to Europe. It is possible that these populations did not have any contact with each other for a long time, developing separately. It is well known that this species used fire and created quite advanced tools and weapons. It was also customary for them to take care of their fellow tribesmen. Perhaps they possessed a rudimentary religion and art. In general, the conditions of life on the planet a million years ago were quite comparable with modern ones, and the hominids who lived at that time already quite resembled people. And before the appearance of the first Cro-Magnons, who were already 100% people of the modern type, there was one small evolutionary step left, a few seconds on the clock of the development of the planet Earth. Thanks to the viewers who watched this video to the end, we also advise you to pay attention to other interesting topics related to the evolution of wildlife and the development of mankind, which are presented on our channel.